Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Congratulations. You've made it to 2021. When it comes to that, that was in itself is an amazing accomplishment. And we're so excited for you. Oh, I see somebody in the love marks already. Listen, you guys are already ahead of the game. The fact that you're here, there's somebody that didn't make it. Mm. They didn't make it past 2020. They didn't make it past even the first day. So congratulations, because you are on the route now. And you are at the first step of the beginning of your lives. I see the Happy New Year's coming in. Yeah. Um, we want Hello, Kimberly. Kimberly, hey, how you doing? Hello, Flag. <laughs> we see you all coming in. Come on in. We got good conversation for y'all tonight. So with that being said, before we even start to go into the direction um, of what we'll be talking about, if you're excited about just being here or grateful for just being in an existence, now is the time for you to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So through your comments, you can say, thank you, Lord. We're able to say it from a microphone point of view, but you're able to say, thank you, Lord, just through your comments. I'm, I'm so excited that God allowed me to get past what I thought was a period, what I thought was the defining line. It was only a transitional place. So before we even move forward, now is a time for you to just say thank you. Yeah, yeah, I see you all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's so huge. Just to, The Bible says in all things, give thanks. Amen. All things. Amen. So there's things that happened this past year that we we didn't give thanks for. We complained about it. Right, right. right. Things that we didn't give thanks for, we just... Um, told God how we didn't like it or we could uh, talk to other people and murmur about it. But I'm going to tell you, when you have the mindset of thank you, Lord. Right. And just being grateful. And grateful. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul said, I, I learned how to, to do what I do right. and be content, Yeah. whether I'm a base or a bounce. Right. Yeah. See, 2019 was an abase year for a lot of people. They were in abundance. Right. But in 2020, they were at the lowest point. So what do you do with that? And because of that pandemic, it's so many, unfortunately, that was at the low point. Right. Um, you know, maybe family members, you've lost family members, or maybe right. you had family members that were sick and you thought you were going to lose them and they came through. Right. And that was an right. opportunity for you to praise God. But also not only just through COVID, but just through, you know, maybe your job, because of COVID, your job, right. you know, Man. financially you were hit, you know, maybe your marriage was hit. And that's why we want to delve into some real conversation tonight um, dealing with marriage. And we do feel very led. We feel that our strong assignment is to really help couples. And many of you who know us and who've been following us for years, we have both always had such a heart, not only for couples, but for singles. Right. I spent many years single. I spent many years trying to figure it out <laughs> right. as a single woman and how to prepare for a husband. What do I do as a wife and all these different things or how to even be single as a godly woman, right? So it's so many different things, but through all of that, we came through it all. But if you're a couple, if you're single, if you are engaged, this um, message tonight is for you. So do us a favor and share invite your followers because we want you all to hear this message that we believe is going to be life changing. And before I pray, because I do want to set the tone because I believe what God's going to say tonight is going to be life changing. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I believe a lot of marriages fail, mm -hmm. there's there's statistics that show, you know, it's over 50% in the church and out of the church mm -hmm. on why marriages fail. Uh, marriages fail because people fail. Yeah. So as an individual, uh, some of the things we'll be talking about are the things that allow you to become a better person. When you become a good person, your marriage becomes right. great. Yeah. If you're still a raggedy person or right. a heathen person, yeah. then your marriage is going to reflect that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that we talk about is the second and third step when it comes to, to being engaged and being married. But I want to uh, delve into how you interact with the people that you're, you've are you been responsible with right now. How do you deal with your siblings? How do you deal with your parents? How do you deal with your coworkers? And it's interesting that everything about the Holy Ghost has to do with how we relate to people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, when we start talking about Galatians 5, the Bible says, 
the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, <laughs> gentleness, uh, meekness. All of those things is how I deal with people. And so some of us wonder why when we get into a marriage, our marriage fail. It fails because we can't relate to people. And it's amazing. God mm. knew that. That's why he said, baby, uh, it's not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just saying that from a husband wife point of view. Right. It's not good for a person to just be by themselves. Because if you by yourself and you on an island, you don't really know how jacked up you are. Yeah, come on. Because you, you, you can be jacked up by yourself and you ain't jacked up. Yeah. It's not until you become. And right. you know, my wife, you know, uh, said something uh, this week that actually launched this this teaching. And I, I, I just really want to drive it home and, and piggyback on it because mm -hmm. she gave just some powerful points. Um, but with that being said, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. For God, this is the day you've made. And once again, we're rejoicing and we're glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us another opportunity, first of all, to go into a new year, a year that we've never seen before. Yes. But God, we thank you. You allowed us to escape the danger and the assassination of the enemy last year mm -hmm. to only now set a platform for what you're going to do this year. Right now, God, we invite your anointing, not into this sermon, but into this conversation and this dialogue. God, that's going to allow birds to be removed, yokes to be destroyed. Most of all, that your people will be empowered at a greater level. My wife and I, we get out of the way. We don't have an agenda that you can't interrupt. Whatever you want to say, God, you have complete control of. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to fix this on Instagram. You can go ahead. Uh, okay. Okay, baby. Yes. 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 Okay. So if you actually uh, had a chance to look at um, the the topic tonight we're going to be talking about something that it is it's so interesting because a lot of people are really uh migrating or they really want what's considered a godly marriage um they really want what they perceive to be as this holy ghost marriage where god is about to do something amazing however my wife launched a question this week um, that I believe prompted her post to it. And, and, and she said, you know what? A lot of people talk about a godly marriage, but are you ready mm -hmm. for a godly marriage? Are you prepared mm -hmm. for a godly marriage? Or are you married? Mm -hmm. And some of the reasons why you guys have so much friction or there's always where you're uh, combating each other or there's always um, uh, disagreements is it because your marriage is more churchy than godly? Right. And so we want to really delve further into that to show you how to literally shift your marriage, how to prepare yourself to be, if you're a woman, prepare yourself to be um, uh, found or discovered by a godly man. Because one thing you said to me earlier today, you said a man is always looking for a wife. No, no, no. Now let me let me. I want to go into detail. Wow. I want to detail because she was coming out of the shower a man when I said. Is always looking for a wife. Well, now, now this is what I say originally, but I say a man's always looking okay. because okay. in a man's makeup, that's how God made us to be. Right. Looking, looking. Yeah. So uh, if a man is not whole, he could be looking for a girlfriend. But he's always looking. I need you to hear this. Wait a minute. If a man <laughs> is not whole, he's looking for a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a man's not whole, because it's in our makeup to look. That's what we do now. Right. It's a couple guys on here. And, and if, you, if you're on here, you can type amen. Or I ain't stepping on your toes if you're married. But I need you to understand, a man is always looking. That's the makeup of our nature. Mm -hmm. That's why... Proverbs and Solomon had to make it clear. He said, a man that findeth a wife finds a good thing. Because he knew men always looking. Right. That's why you find men, they call them predators, and they're in the club, and they're in the hookah joints. They, they're looking for something. Mm. But it's not until they become whole that they start to look for a wife. My Lord. So that's where um, you have to put yourself in a position, women, where you are foundable yeah. by a man looking for a wife, right. not a 
a girlfriend. Yeah, not a man or a boy or he's trying to figure it out looking for a hookup or what they say. Well, because this is what I believe. A man who's finally reached the point where he says, I want a wife. Number one, he's worked on himself enough to understand not only do I want her, I need her. Right. Because the Bible says, what does the rest of it say? That he, that she's going to bring him favor. Right. A man right? that finds a wife finds a good thing and, and obtained favor. favor so when Lord. you mature as a man and ladies, when you're single and you meet a man and yeah. he's mature enough to recognize yeah. Yeah. not only a wife in you, but he recognizes the favor that you're going to bring him, you will be running from the men that are not ready for you when it comes to wife, to being a wife. If he's still looking at you as a girlfriend, you need to run. If you're, and that's if you're ready and, to be a wife. Well, and the thing about it is because you present yourself as a girlfriend. Right. So, so and then, as the old folks would say, if if you get the milk without the cow, why buy it? Yeah. So if you yeah. present yourself in girlfriend features, yeah. like not like you can add anything to him. Right. You're just trying to create a space where he's not lonely and you're not lonely. And, and, that's good. So that's what good. happens is a lot of times. People, and we'll be talking about this in some future broadcasts and courses that we got coming, but a lot of times uh, individuals, whether it's men or women, they're not prepared to be married. They just don't want to be single. Ooh. And see, don't want to be single can look like I'm ready to be married. My Lord. Baby, one, no, of the, that's good. one of the things that stood out to me, you did a Raising Wives course mm -hmm. uh, about seven months ago, and I remember it vividly. Um, and it was one young lady that was in it that said, based on your class, when you said raising wives, she realized she was not ready yeah, to be a wife. I she she thought she was ready to be a wife yeah. because she wanted a man. But when you start talking about what a wife looks like, right. she realized she wasn't ready to be married. She just didn't want to be alone. Well, it's interesting because the title of the, the especially for Instagram, the title is, are you ready or what was the exact title? Are you ready to be married to a godly? Are you ready for a godly marriage? Right. And right. I think the title says, um, everyone is not ready for marriage. Right. For right. marriage, let me say this again. Marriage is not for everyone. And which, which is why Paul. You got to know. Which, you got to determine if marriage is for you, especially it, a godly marriage. Well, because the Bible says this. It, it says, and I think when we hear scriptures like it's not good for man to be alone. We automatically assume that everybody's supposed to be married, but that's not it. He just Ooh. said you need to be connected with somebody. You, you, there's, there's a connection that you need to have yeah. in order, which is why Paul said you. Uh, Paul stayed single his whole life because based on his makeup, he realized marriage wasn't the most important thing. Yeah. I get it. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply, but everybody may not be able to do that based on your makeup and based on your assignment. Yeah. So a lot of it is, first of all, before we go into this, I want to relinquish anybody that feels like being single is a curse. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Being single is a curse because that's unscriptural. Paul has talked about being single at times. There are certain people right. that your makeup and your character mm -hmm. says I, I, marriage is not for me. Right. Because in one of the ways that you can start to identify, and I'm not one of those, but just, just assessments. But if you don't do people with, Come and on, if man. you are all about this, this, this mindset of I just need to buy, be by myself, you may want to start to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. of whether marriage works for you. That's why you got to know who you are. Yeah. And you got to know yourself. And you got to know, am I able to really serve another person? Mm -hmm. Because marriage, once you get married, is no longer just about you. Woo! Jesus, Jesus. And I, I don't want to get ahead of you, baby, because you 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 made some points that we got to go yeah, into. I, we got to get into because they were just so profound. But and you know, let, let's just really talk. Marriage and, and relationship is a really um, a strong assignment we feel that the Lord has really put on our lives. And so we have such a heart for number one, for married people to get it right. Mm -hmm. Because if we do it God's way and if we use the GPS that he's given us, which is mm -hmm. the word of God, mm -hmm. we can do it. Is there a marriage out there perfect? No. But we have a perfect God who can guide you both to loving each other and loving each other the right way to you can be best friends, you can be a couple, you can be ministry partners, you can be business partners, you can be all of that. But listen, it must be done God's way. Secondly, if you're single, 
God, if you if your desire is to be married and to have a husband, you can have that. But you got to be willing to say, I'm going to take a seat mm -hmm. to say, it's just, I'm just going to work on me. And while you work on me, Lord, prepare me to serve someone else. You know what? And what's interesting is in order for me to position and posture myself to serve, hmm. I have to be whole. I can never serve, serve anyone if I'm not a whole person. Right. And so that's some of the problem. People come into relationship, but I will say this. I need somebody to type this in. <laughs> While you were talking, baby, when you said GPS, the Lord gave me an acronym. He's never gave me, but it's, <laughs> it's God's patrol system. Mm -hmm. So God's patrol system. So I need somebody to I, I need somebody to type that in so I'll remember God's it. And go, God's patrol system. So when he has a GPS for you, whether it's to be single. And see, I, I believe we're in living in a time where because we've equated marriage to success. If you're married, then you must be in God's will. Oh, come on. And so if you're not married, now you have... That's why people will just choose anybody. Right. Or just people will title. say yes right. to anybody. Just to have a title. Just, just to say I'm not lonely anymore. But I believe through these teachings, what God is allowing us all to see is everybody is not, and I don't use the word anointed and stuff like that, because anointing means burden removing your destroying power of God. I don't necessarily use your sign to be married. I don't use those words. But what I will say is everybody is not prepared to be married. Right. So based on who you are that's it. and Period. your mindset, that has a lot to do with whether you're prepared to be married. Yeah. And so when she said that to you seven months ago, it really settled in me. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. where a lot of people don't get to. So yeah. now, yeah. because you want to be married, yeah. you're not even a place yet where you can serve. And you know what? I, I just really believe, too, what happens as you become whole as a um, single person, you almost have to be careful because there you may get to the point where you say, that's why I don't want to be married. Yeah. Like I feel complete within, with just me and Jesus. Right. So you'd be surprised how many people are women I've met, especially mm -hmm. that honestly want to be single and they just want to serve God and that's exactly how they want to go. And that's okay. Right. She's not to be looked upon different because she chooses not to have a husband, but she chooses to for Jesus Christ to continue to be her heavenly father and her husband. So singleness, you can do so much for the Lord because you don't have to serve someone else. Which so is so why awesome. culturally, why you got to be careful. You know, every now and then I tap into some some reality television shows, but oftentimes there's cultures that would make you believe. That if you're not married and you don't have children, you're mm. not successful. Ooh, now so the, the cultural part of it, that's why, listen, I need that you to hear, terrible. especially in the African-American community. Now, and I can only say that because I'm African-American. I'm not talking about every other. But all of a sudden, people ask you, when are you going to get married? Right. That's when right. are you going to have children? So now, but it's more about them than it is you. Woo, so because no, I no. want to be a grandparent. Yeah. Now I'm asking you when you're going to get married. You have my grandbaby. Yeah, 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 there. yeah, yeah. But to be honest is, if you're not prepared for marriage, that's one of the worst mistakes you can ever make. Uh, one of the worst mistakes. In, in the name of, I don't want to be looked at, and I don't want this flashlight magnified on me as if I'm not in God's will. And I'm, you got to be careful because... Um, social media, mm -hmm. church, and all of those different arenas will make you make it look like it's picture perfect. Yeah, yeah. It'll make you look like we got, you know, we just had Christmas and everybody was putting up the pictures with their spouses and their children and their pajamas and all of that. If you're single, you got to be careful watching that type of stuff because those are pictures. Not saying that they're not happy, mm -hmm. not saying that they're, you know, it's a glorious time and everything's wonderful, but it takes work <laughs> to get well, to that. Well, even place. if. My point is, even if they are happy, baby, even if it is glorious, it may not be you. It may not be you. Now that's good. Yeah, that's so right. even if all that is right, right. Even, yeah. even if they are happy, they are glorious, they having a, a mighty time in the Lord, and they all of they, they sexing <laughs> it, whatever it is, whatever they doing, right. that don't mean it's you. Yeah. So it's more about making sure you're you prepared, are prepared and not comparing yourself. And the Bible talks about that comparing yourself to other people. So for me, it's more important that people understand just because you see it 
right. don't mean it's you. And every marriage is different. Yeah. Every marriage is different. Every couple is different. Two people that come together, they're coming together as one. Right. And so God is sharpening both of you. Right. God is exposing things in both of you. God is allowing the Holy Spirit to tug things in both of you. And guess what? You're going to have days that you look at each other and say, I don't believe that that's how you are. Or I don't believe that that's how you are. But guess what? Believe it. But God is going to allow you to deal with it. So that you can come back together and get closer and closer and closer together as one. Are you ready for that? Because you know, to be honest, it's, it's so interesting. Because I, I know my wife looking me sideways. Because I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I do some things periodically uh, that when I go back and look at it, I'll look at me sideways too. But this is the deal: when that happens, it's not even about the other person. Because it's so easy to, to point the finger and say, I can't believe you acted like that. I can't believe you oh, respond man. like that. That, 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 yeah. that, that that's, the, that's the natural response. And let me tell you something. When, I first, when we first got married, first of all, <laughs> I had just came out of a very toxic relationship. And I had truly turned my life over to the Lord again and made a promise that, Lord, I'm going to stay single. I want to serve you. And, you know, I'm going to pray more. And, and had I, But I didn't realize, even though I made that declaration to God and I aligned my lifestyle with it, um, I didn't realize God was preparing me for a godly man. OK, so I used to live alone. My children were grown and in college and I was just really in God's face. Had no clue that I was being prepared for marriage to a godly man, not just marriage, because it's two different things. You can be married, but our topic today is about being married to a godly man or woman, okay? And so there's um there's women who he want he's not prepared for you. You're godly and he's not. So it just you it just depends. But anyway, when I met my husband, our first date on a Saturday night was at church. He invited me to his Bible study on a Saturday night. And I in my past, was never invited to a church on a Saturday night for Bible study. We were going out to dinner or, you know, to the movies or other things. But that was my first sign to say, OK, this is something different. Well, as we got to know each other a little bit, some of my character traits that God was still working on started to come out. And see, that's what happened. Although I was in a space where God was preparing me and he was sh sharpening me and teaching me how to be a wife, there were some areas that wasn't completely there yet. Or the test came once I got, once that area in my life got touched. So we had a situation. That side of me came out and I was able to recognize something to say, okay, this is a godly man in my life. I have to make sure I really get myself together and be able to take correction. We're going to get into the point because I really want to talk about this. Being able to not get offended, being able to not be so easily um, uh, 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 just jump in. It's, it's, it's not your fault. You didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't say that all those different things are character traits that God is trying to work out in you. And so let's go over some of the points that we have right here because I don't want to get ahead of myself. Oh, baby, I was, I was just leading you. I was just saying, I, I don't that, want to that's, get ahead of that's point. But, <laughs> but, but can you allow a godly spouse to be able to give you correction? Can you receive it? But listen, if we're prideful, if we're arrogant, if we're stubborn, if we're hard-headed, if we're used to being in toxic relationships, you, you go from a toxic relationship where both of y'all going at it. And then you go from that to a godly relationship where he's ready to sit down and talk about it. And let's pray. And well, you know, I'm going to come. Let me go outside and take a walk. And you like, I don't want you ready to just, come, just jump through through hoops. Are you ready? Are you ready? And, you know, you got to. So that's what I'm saying. We, we got to ask ourselves these questions. And, and if not, because you know yourself better than anybody know. You know what? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say this though. I will say this. If you're married, this is not a uh, a license uh -oh, oh, oh. to dismount from your marriage. It's not. It is an opportunity to realign though. Absolutely. It's not a license Absolutely. to dismount. If you, you got in it already, God honors the covenant. But well, and you know, and just 
by you saying that point, by the time we got married, it's not like neither one of us were perfect. God was still working things out of each one of us. But right. that was the point. I was, my goal, my desire, my my heart was, Lord, I want to be a godly wife. Right. And his was the same way. I'm pastoring, I'm shepherding, and Lord continue to clean me and create in me a clean heart. So we both had the same desire, which meant God was going to continue to clean us up. And so if you're married, and you're listening, then that's a place that you need to say, you know, well, maybe we're having some issues. Maybe we're going through this because I'm a little bit too mouthy. Maybe I need to listen to you more. Maybe I need to grow in this area. Maybe I need to grow in that area and start to look at self. Right, right. Rather than blaming one another. Right. So um, when it comes to godly marriage, and we're not talking about, again, churchy marriage, and so that we've done posts and videos in the past, of what churchy marriage looks like, mm -hmm. which is completely different. Godly marriage has yeah. to do with biblical principles. Churchy marriage, if you're taking notes, churchy marriage has to do with how people perceive you. Mm -hmm. See, Come on now. we've got to be delivered from people and how yeah. they perceive us. So that's why you'll get all these other uh, terminologies that have nothing to do with marriage, like destiny, anointing, calling. No, you're not called to be a wife. I need you to hear this. You're not called to be a wife or called to be a husband. You intentionally prepare to be one. My Lord, say that again. <laughs> I, I need, listen, this is not a lot of hallelujahs right now. You're not called to be a husband or called to be a wife. You intentionally prepare to become one. And then you intentionally do the work to stay <laughs> right, right. But I, I, I want to remove that that spiritual, mystical, prophetic aspect of what marriage looks like. Jesus. After being in ministry for over two decades, I want to dispel the myth that there's no such thing as being called to be a husband or called to be a wife. If you want to be that, you have to spiritually mature to become it. Because mm, marriage is for mature people. There's a, so now, now that we, we've done that, the first point is a godly spouse would disrupt your comfort My zone Lord. and push you to become all oh, that God. God called you to be. And you know, I will, I'll say that. Um, I will say this. Um, what my wife has done in the last seven years has She's been able to meet me in certain places and become a bomb of Gilead mm. and a salve and help me heal. But also she's disrupted. Me. Yeah. And I want you to know that disruption is not like this seasonal thing where you're only disrupted in seasons and then the next season you're not disrupted. Ongoing growth and maturity in marriage is always going to be this. <clears throat> that disrupt. Always. It's always yeah. going to be a disrupt. So. Yeah. Understanding what marriage is. Mm -hmm. Marriage is different than family. See, family is a part of your bloodline and you feel responsible for based on the genealogy. But marriage is a covenant and it's based on a responsibility. I need you to hear this. You're not responsible when it comes to your brother, your sister, anybody else. And even your responsibility with your parents is just to honor them. Mm -hmm. But you're not responsible for them. My Lord. When it comes to your spouse, there's a level of responsibility and accountability. Jesus. So that's why that relationship has to shift. If you're still treating your spouse like you treat your mama, it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. If you're treating your spouse like you treat your kids, it's going to be a problem. All of those other relationships is based on by default. The marriage is a covenant, which is why even Paul, when he's talking to the church at Ephesus, he makes Jesus and the church synonymous and typology for husband and wife because he said, listen, it's a choice and I recognize the covenant. So when it comes to that, you've got to be ready to be disrupted. You know, when, it, and when I was reading this about the whole disruption of your comfort zone, and, and this is just a real simple comfort zone for me. Um, I grew up very shy, very laid back, more, um, and not that I wasn't a people person, but I was okay with just smaller groups. And so for me to be shy, I wasn't the type that would talk on film, on in a microphone, none of that. I didn't care. I was a behind the scenes type person. 
but God saw fit <laughs> to collide my life with a pastor and who gets up and preach the word of God and I'm sitting in the front row and God is pulling on me and pulling on me and then when I get home my husband is speaking it to me and telling me I'm going to be great and what God is calling me to do and baby you can do it and then he would come and ask me things that was not comfortable for me he would ask me to do the announcements on Sunday he would ask me to welcome the people to church I never forget that and I would, at first, I would say no, because in my mind, I'm like, that's not what I do. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm good. The wonderful thing about it is when God is calling you to it, he'll bring somebody to you that'll pull it out of you. See, it wasn't that he was trying to make me do something. It was something that God had already called me to do with him. And so he was just encouraging and speaking into my life. And let me tell you something. All of a sudden, every time he preached, every time he talked, every time he spoke to my life, every time he prayed for me, every time he laid hands on me, I just started to get stronger and wiser and more confident in the word of God. So one Sunday, I never forget, I walked into the bedroom. We were getting ready for church one Sunday morning, and I walked in and said, baby, today I'm going to do the announcements for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked up. You were like, surprised. Right. And so I, I do want to <laughs> say this um, because there's been similar times where it was something similar as well that you're able to pull out of me. Mm -hmm. But what you got to be comfortable with in marriage is when it doesn't happen mm -hmm. that as the person that's encouraging, that's you don't become discouraged by Ooh, it. Because were you discouraged by me sometimes? No, real talk. <laughs> yeah, he was. I, I, was <laughs> I wasn't discouraged. I will say irritated, mm -hmm. but not discouraged because I knew where God was calling you to be. And you know, so this is put a pin right here, baby. This is this is good for if you're single and you're listening. <laughs> and, and God is preparing you for someone. And you know that's your desire to be married. God will give you the desires of your heart. So whoever he's praying for you, whoever he's going to bring to you, be prepared for that. I had no idea. But whoever he is, whoever she is, he's, they're going to be able to disrupt your comfort zone to be able to um, fulfill God's will in your life. And the reason why you know that, and you know, I'm always going to make it about scripture right. at the end of the day, because um, the truth of the matter is you will not go to your next until you release yourself from your last. That's good. Abel, you will not go to your next until, until you release yourself, yourself from, from your last. last. This is what God told Abel. Get thee out there. Kindred, away from that country, as a land I'll show thee, I will make your name great. Right. He said, but you got to disconnect from that before you do this. Mm -hmm. And so I knew, even when I married uh, my wife, I knew what was in her. Um, and first of all, let me let me tell you this. You cannot make somebody <laughs> into this ministry general in the kingdom. Let me make that very clear. That's good. Okay. That's good. Just because you marry somebody in ministry does not mean that y'all supposed to be in ministry together. That's I need good. you to hear this. Okay. okay, so the one of the reasons why I knew that she was called to assist me in ministry. Now, she could have been my wife and never assisted me in ministry. I need you to hear this. She could have been my wife because the Bible says, man, that finds a wife, find the good thing and obtain in favor with the Lord. She could have been my wife and just said, you know what? I'm just going to be there. And I'll be your wife. And that would have been nothing wrong with that. One of the ways I knew that she was called to do something in the kingdom is because of what she was already doing naturally. Listen, mm. it wasn't this major uh, epiphany or anointing that came on me one day. And I said, <laughs> whoa, no, no. In the salon, she was. And after a while, I, I, I told her, I said it was ministry behind the chair. And I think you may have did that for her. For a season, ministry behind the chair, but she was able to minister to people and to meet them where they are. She was uh, compelling. People were following her. All of those are a gathering anointing that let me see, okay, she was already doing this in the world, Woo. slash an evangelist. See, don't tell me you in ministry, you don't do people. See, I need you... <laughs> So, Amen. so some of the reason why it was easy for me to see it in her was to say, okay, God, not only did you give me a wife, but this is what a ministry partner looks like. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's already doing it. David was keeping sheep on the backside of the desert 
and God anointed him to do in the kingdom what he was already doing here. That's why it's so important to make sure you with somebody that you partner with somebody that can see that can see the, the, the amazing things that God has already put on the inside of you, because that's how we get developed is by your partner and somebody just helping you develop that thing. So I thank God for that part, because I was able to really do well as long as I was um becoming more confident and bold mm -hmm. in what God was calling me to do. So and so and so there may be somebody on here that maybe that's not the component that mm -hmm. you have. But it doesn't mean that you don't have a kingdom marriage because you don't have a ministry marriage. So oh, there's a lot good. of people that's, that's there. You're looking for titles. And so if, there, if he's not that or she's not this, then that doesn't mean that I'm a, I have a kingdom marriage. But titles doesn't equate mm -hmm. to kingdom marriages at all. And so I just wanted to share that with you. That's why it was easy for me, sweetheart, to show that level of grace and walk the process out. You know what? This just came to my spirit, and it's and it is really dealing with um, it's really dealing with the whole disrupting as well. Let me say this: the, the reason why marriage is for two people to disrupt one another's comfort zone is because we have work to do in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's because we have whether kingdom or business. Mm -hmm. You have, but do you know that marriage can can break you? Mm -hmm. Marriage can be one of the worst. It can either make you be the best of you or the worst of you. Right. So imagine right. trying to build an empire. Imagine trying to build a, a, a ministry, a church, something that God told you to do. But you constantly are in, in tears or sadness or pain or arguing back and forth with your mate. Do you think that God will bring you together to do that? Instead right. of fulfilling the purpose that he called you to fulfill, whether it's separately or together, but together you do better, right? Which is why, uh, even if it's a car wash, if, right. if he if he has purposed you, that's right. And I know this is not what this is about tonight, but if he's purposed you, uh, and when I say purpose, somehow we have confused purpose with church. We have done that. Mm. We we could so when we hear things like, and we know. All things work together for the good of them that love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. We think purpose is church. There is no scripture in the Bible that equates purpose to church. Purpose is what he's ordained you to do. Listen, there's somebody right now that you may be on the brink of signing a contract to be a McDonald's franchise owner. Right. And you're going to employ 30 people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and their families are going to be impacted forever. And your purpose is to make sure that they're impacted positively. That's purpose. And but how can two people that are married that live in the same house impact their purposes? What God is calling them to do if you can't get along, if you're not doing what the word of God tells you. So the first purpose in that marriage is what? To make sure the marriage is fixed, right. to make sure the marriage is working, to make sure we're doing, we're we're, we're writing notes and we're taking. We're learning how to be married. Right. I can't fulfill what God told me to do if I'm constantly at odds with my mate. And you know, that, that, that's so interesting because I, the, it's the Bible, impossible. Yeah, because the Bible it says, how can you walk except they be agreed? So that's his purpose. Agreement. Oh, agreement. agreement. So, so, so we're, we're trying to figure out what his purpose is. It's agreement. That's right. And if we don't believe it, the reason why the world failed was disagreement in the book of Genesis. Yeah. The fact that they didn't agree was the reason why the whole world now fell under that category. So agreement is the first purpose of God. But mm -hmm. there's somebody right now that you're trying to figure out if it's about church or ministry. No, some of you all just got business purpose together. Because right. see, your, right. your marriage is kingdom. Yeah. Your marriage don't have to be churchy. Your marriage is kingdom. Yeah. And kingdom is what's going to give God glory yeah. no matter what. So you've got to make sure that you connect yourselves with a nurturing environment that's going to teach you how to connect mm -hmm. in a way where now not only are you individually sound, but your marriage now becomes a proper representation of God. That the mirror, I like that. That the, the marriage, marriage becomes, becomes a proper, proper representation, representation of God. God. And I believe, I just believe that if your marriage is a proper represent, representation of God, 
you can do anything. Yep. Yep. Sky's the limit for you. What God has for you two together is unbelievable. But what's stopping some of us and what's stopping some of the marriages is the stubbornness and the pride and, wow. and the, the comfort zone that they won't allow to be disrupted. Right. Some of the comfort zone is getting rid of family members. Some right. of the comfort zone is getting rid of friendship. That's some right, of the it. comfort zone is we got to go on date nights, even though I don't feel like putting on some makeup and some hair and going out. Right. Some of the right. comfort zone is doing what you got to do that doesn't feel comfortable. And you know what? That, that's so powerful. So powerful. And there's a series coming. We will talk about that on a whole nother level of what servitude looks like when it comes to marriage, but being able to position yourself to be disrupted mm -hmm. is huge. Um, yeah. And knowing that disruption is not the enemy, because that's the other thing we got to, we got to get it's away from. Enemy. Yeah. We got to get away from our spiritual terminology that thinking because it feels bad, all of a sudden it's the enemy. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think a lot of marriages are, are, are not together anyway because we use too much spiritual terminology. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to deal with a natural person. Yeah. But if I need to tell you I love you, I'm going to say I love you. Right. I'm not going to be all mystical about the fact that I just want to say I love you. I want to be vulnerable and just be upset. But sometimes we get so mystical right. and we don't want to come down. You know how they say you're so heavenly. You don't, you know, you, you don't, you're no earthly good. You got to know how to still love God. Because the more you love God, the more you're going to love yourself. And the way that you do that is you don't even invite church terminology into your relationship. Mm. So some of the problem is, and that's the reason why I've said many, many times, um, when I have a disagreement with my wife, it's a disagreement with my wife. It's not oh, a disagreement no. with the pastor's wife. It's not a disagreement with first lady. It's not a disagreement with evangelists. It's Vincent and artists. And you know what? I had to strip so much of that bad teaching. I had to strip so much of that, those unbeliefs, because I did look at him, which wasn't fair, because I looked at you in a certain way. How can you do that? You're a pastor. So if you're single and God is sending you a godly man with a title or with some type of a, a leadership, he, he's still a man. And so I, in the beginning of our marriage, I did, I would put that on you about why, how you are not supposed to. And so that can be very frustrating and very judgmental. You know, and we call that the churchy thing to be is a very judgmental type Christian. So we've had to grow through so much of that. And we enjoy our marriage. We enjoy one another because we are, we don't, we're not dehumanized. We're not it's, dehumanized. Listen, it's Vincent and artists. <laughs> Or some of you all may know nicknames is recent peaches. Yes. Listen, when I tell you it, it is what it is. And yes. so that's what makes it successful. That's right. That's, that's what right. makes it um, we're able to overcome anything. That's yes. what makes yes. it. It's yes. when you try to put other things on it that God didn't even do. God never talked about titles mm. in marriage. That's something that the Western church has done and created this culture. So now you got bishops. They don't want anybody that can't help them in ministry. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What's interesting is CEOs don't do that. Nope. CEOs of company, they just want a wife. They just want a wife. Mm -hmm. They just want a wife. So it's, it's amazing how we're able to, um, to adjust when we have the right information. But the second aspect of are you really ready? For a godly marriage is a godly spouse will always want to pray before making major decisions. Will you patiently wait for the answer? That's a good one. Will you wait for the answer? Because in our human nature, in our human nature, we want to answer right then and there. We want it to be addressed right then and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because our security is based on the moment, not <laughs> the future. And you know what? This this part is really important, especially if you're single. Because when you go from being single and you're able to make all of your own decisions, mm -hmm. you're able to go buy that purse when you want to. You're able to go you know, buy a house if you want to. Whatever you want to do when you're single, you can just do it. But once you're married, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? So you got to now come to your spouse. And you both agree. 
And he may say, or she may say, well, baby, I need to pray about that before we, before we move forward on mm -hmm. that. Or baby, let's pray about it first. Mm -hmm. So are you going to walk away with attitude? Are you going to say, well, I'm just going to go get it anyway? But can you see how that would bring strife? Right. Because the godly person said, well, let me pray about it. Let me go to God about it. And then I'll come back to you about it. Right. Your response or your reaction is going to tell whether you can handle a godly spouse or not. Or if you can be or if you're ready for a godly marriage, you may be married. Right. And right. your spouse is at that point where he said, you know what, babe, I'm going to pray about it first. And I'll let you know. God may not get back to him or her for about a week. Mm -hmm. But you sitting back with your arms crossed with an attitude because you want to go on that vacation or you want to buy that that sofa, whatever it is. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and he right. said, you know, because it don't even have to be deep. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's just something that he just feels or she feels, you know what, I really want to go to the Lord on this. Right. Okay. Right. You got to decide, are you can you handle that? Because that's going to, you got to have patience. The Bible says patience creates our perfect work. You have to be able to develop patience in order to handle that. Isn't it interesting how we will seek God <laughs> about our mate and getting married. Right. But we don't seek him on how to stay married. Mm, my Lord, my Lord. Uh, because so things like that will allow <laughs> I see you, woman of God. She said, this is phenomenal teaching. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank Praise you. God. Um, it's it's just amazing that you got to be prepared for it. You got to, you can't just fast and pray for a spouse. That's right. You got to fast and pray to be a spouse. Oh, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't fast and pray to, to, to get a spouse. You, it takes more fasting and praying to be a spouse. You better talk. Because, see, to, to get a spouse, all you can do if you show up at the right place and you get the wrong cat, <laughs> they may, and y'all go to the courthouse or whatever, you can be married very quickly. It very takes quickly. more fasting. And, well, I see Instagram, yeah. Instagram blowing up now. Yeah. Uh, it takes more fasting and praying to be a spouse than it does right. to get a spouse. Every day. But some of the churchy aspect of it is, we uh we talk about anoint anointing is not what gets you the right spouse. Destiny and calling is not what gets you the right spouse. Ooh. Having a fragrance of a wife gets you a godly spouse. Mm -hmm. The 